103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, October 10th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Welcome to our 20th episode of all time. Oh no, more like 420, <laughs> more like 450, <laughs> but we're keeping on keeping on. Our guests today are George Brown, two and a half. He'll be with us here in a little bit. Uh, Dread Pirate Higgs, hello Dread. Ahoy there. And John Richards, all the way from England. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you. Recovered. Cool. Yeah, I'm Excellent. happy you're fine. I'm very happy you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also be talking about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Well, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, I'm, why do you have to make it me versus you? Why can't you guys oh, tell, I can tell me you. I can talk what about it right you, now. the topic is? <laughs> Are you making these walls? It's always us versus them. We're going to be talking about that on this show today. Tactics of narcissism, starting with us versus them, and then whatever else we want to talk about after that. But before we get into the meat and potatoes, I want to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Well, be me captain, I shall not want... He maketh me to float in salt waters. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth me bowl. He steereth me through the states of noodliness for goodness sake. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking, for thou art with me. Thy mast and thy rudder, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quenchest me thirst with grog. My goblet runneth over. Truly, pasta and grog shall abide with me all the days of me life, and I shall dwell in the galley of our quab forever. Amen. <laughs> George, it looks like you're finally set up now. Ho- let's see. Let's do a quick check. Are you there? Oh, well, I think I'm here. Am, am I there? Yes, you're well, absolutely okay. wonderful. It's good to see you. Uh, guys, we're going to be talking. Uh-oh, I'm getting some weird internet awards. Uh, we're going to be talking about narcissism again today, but specifically about tactics of narcissism. But I do would like to check up with everybody and see how you guys have been doing. John Richards, you just survived. Like, what was it? Something, it was basically the flu, right? Well, I was telling you about, like, well, I was telling you about, right? <laughs> Coronavirus 2019. I yes. know. I'm a survivor. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, of course, I was vaccinated way back in the beginning of the year. Good for you. So, so for me, it was, you know, people who are my age and don't get vaccinated have a 50 50 chance of living. Yeah. But, In my case, I was vaccinated, so I suffered a mild sort of cold flu type of thing. It it wiped me out, to be honest. You know, I had to lay down and sleep a lot. And and there was a bit of upper respiratory nonsense, but I'm fully recovered. Isn't that fantastic? I'm so happy to hear that. I really am. I really am. That Mm -hmm. plus another win for science, right? Isn't that great? Yeah, just, yeah. It's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's like, hey, I get to keep and, my friends around. Isn't that and awesome? yesterday, I had my flu jab. <laughs> okay, cool. I got my, you, you call it a flu jab? Yeah, it's yeah. a slang flu term for, for, for vaccination. Okay, Dred's nodding his head. Do you, you call them jabs over there in Canada too? Sure. Okay, sure. <laughs> jabs and stabs. <laughs> Can I please get stabbed and jabbed today? <laughs> hey, Dred, how have you been? How was your week so far? Well, today uh, we're going to be celebrating our Canadian Thanksgiving. Congratulations. Um, yes, thank you. And uh, uh, what's probably not known to most Americans is that uh, Canadians started celebrating Thanksgiving uh, well before uh, the American holiday came into existence. Uh, wow. I believe it was 1592 when some guy came over from Europe and landed in Nunavut. And... Uh, 
uh, and so they gave thanks for having arrived safely on the shores of Eastern Canada. Wow, and, uh, we so that's the story cool. behind Thanksgiving. I yeah. I am sometimes appalled with how much American centric my education right. is. Right, yeah. I really, am. Yeah. I really am. I was discuss. I have, I have a really long discussion about that yesterday. I'm not going to bring it up again today, so don't worry about it. The guy who listens uh-huh. to the show, but I would have something to say. <laughs> yeah, I know it's crazy. It's crazy. Just yeah. things. That I'm like, of course, it wasn't an American thing. Of course, it was somewhere else. Yes. <laughs> you never hear about that in school. But I did want to. I, I did also want to say. So uh, I I put my culinary skills uh, to the test. Uh, so last night I. I cooked a, a, a ham okay. with a honey mustard glaze, which is just oh. divine. Oh. And then I made the stuffing today for the turkey, and then I'll be cooking the turkey after the show. So oh. silly question, is it the same kind of standards of Thanksgiving in America, if you know the traditions, like the same sort of ornaments, turkey? Uh... But we, we just go for the food. We don't, we don't, we dispense with the ornaments. Uh, Got it. Um, it's just turkey, ham, and Brussels sprouts and uh, scalp potatoes and that kind of stuff. Nice. Can I come? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> there's plenty to go around. <laughs> I'm surprised there's no maple syrup involved. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. actually surprised by that. Yeah, no you're pancakes. right. No, there's honey, but no maple syrup. Okay, okay, okay. Joe, uh, Larry, we're going to play a game called What's on Your Shirt? What's on your shirt? What's on your shirt? What is on your shirt? It's a flowery shirt this time, just flowers and palm trees and jungles. You know, know, it's no longer summer. Are you just going to, are you just going to, yeah, but the high today is supposed to be 81. Well, that's so global weird. warming. You know, we know we're ruining the planet. It doesn't mean yeah. we got, yeah, there's well. still fashion clocks that run by the hour. My <laughs> you mean like, uh, September 1st? That clock? Yeah. 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 There we go. And I did switch a little bit before over to flannel, long sleeve flannels and stuff where the cold snaps we've had, but getting back more again, it's it too is. warm to be wearing that all day. It is. I love I love Dred's shirt. Yeah, and what is one on your shirt, Dred? Yeah. Oh, wanted dead or alive, Schrodinger's cat. And good it's a black and cat alive. too. Notice and it's, it's a dead and alive. It reminds it me. It should of say dead and alive. Yeah, it does. It does. Dead I've and seen, alive. Oh, dead and alive. Yeah. yeah. I've seen a brilliant meme on that theme, meme theme, mm-hmm. which is we've got um, Saint Schrodinger, the forgotten saint. Standing, out, <laughs> standing outside the tomb and the rock <laughs> is rolled back closing it okay and he's saying to a couple of visiting women mary and somebody he's saying and if we keep it shut jesus is always both alive and dead <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like that's it. awesome nice. we're gonna th- we're gonna throw it up to our own man of the hour george brown we're talking about narcissism today specifically about the tactics they use. And so well, that's why are we uh, talking about this? Yeah, we could. Um, well, before that, I would just wanted to mention what I've been up to. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I have, uh, as you may know, I am interested in the effects of destructive people on my own personal life and kind of delving into that as a personal quest to try to peel the onion and... Uh, plow through the cobwebs. And so uh, I was doing a little reading up on a few people, Jim Jones of the People's Temple uh-huh. and Jeffrey Epstein. And honestly, I, I got so disgusted when reading about Jeffrey Epstein that I almost couldn't keep reading. Um, and, and anyway, the, the, the topic of the hour about him is Compromise. It's a new uh, Russian term that I think we're all going to be hearing more and more about in the future. But um, I will leave that to rest right here. So that's where I've been putting a lot of time. And of course, so what does that term mean? Compromise. Well, it's a form of blackmail. But <laughs> we're used to thinking about blackmail, the goal of blackmail being money. In this way, it's the manipulation of another person yes. to, to do what you want money. them to do. I yeah. see. Yes. Okay. To, uh, coercion. Like, yeah, coer- it's a form of coercion. And I, I believe that J. Edgar Hoover was actually running the United States in a way 
by doing that to politicians. And um, you know, there was a fellow in New York City who ran New York in the background, and his name was Robert Moses, and I believe he did the same thing. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> can, I flag up, can, can I flag up um, George's wonderful mixed metaphor? I've never heard it before. Go for it. Peel the onion and work through the cobweb. <laughs> uh, well, I'm peeling my own onion you know, in an attempt at, at my old age to understand myself. If I peel an onion and I read some cobwebs, I'm not peeling that onion anymore. I was just like, okay. Uh, you see, you're, you're, you're trying to work out your baggage. George. But I, yes, exactly. George, George, what I love about your the story that you just told us right now is that it sounds like there are a lot of different kinds of tactics narcissists use to coerce people to make them do what they want to do. And it's unfortunately really effective. And I yeah. think it leads into the yes. power that we, uh, how about it? It leads into a direct example of how we give narcissists power. And then it oh, yes. asks the question of like, why do we do that? And why are these things so? Yes. And so that's a wonderful question, I think. And, and it's and, what we're uh, in this show. And I think yeah. it's like the, it was a topic that you brought up from yesterday. It's like, why is this so effective? And can we break these tactics down so we know them when we see them? And yeah. so, May I say, uh, I would work. like to offer just one little overview here for a moment um, and say that there is a difference between what we're talking about and official definitions of narcissism. And so, or let's say narcissistic personality disorder. And mm -hmm. so these definitions, uh, and I think this is very exciting the work that psychologists are doing ahead of the official diagnoses in, in a way. Oh. So the official diagnoses are conservative. They are what people have observed and validated and codified. So it's a scientific approach and, and they're tending to be back a little bit. Whereas yeah. there's very exciting work being done ahead of, of the official de definitions. So we will be talking about what we've observed kind of from the armchair and not a, not the official definitions. Sure, sure. sure. We're not we, have a, we have an expression for this, which must be an American expression, I think, because it refers to a movie. We oh. call this sort, of, this sort of mental coercion, we call it gaslighting. Uh, it's something new that I've been hearing about, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's one. Now, you said it came from a movie. Which movie did it come yes. from? Yes. You know? Gaslight. <laughs> oh, there's a movie called Gaslight. Is it? Does it? Is it just some guy gaslighting another person? Is it that was, literally where that thing came from? The old black and white movie where this sort of Svengali figure controls a, a girl to do his bidding by, you know, not threats but um, manipulation. Uh, wow. That sounds like uh, the premise of V for Vendetta as well. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, George, what's up? Uh, well, what it is, is um, it is one tactic that they can use. Right. And, and the, what it is, is it is the um, convincing somebody else that what they know to be true is false and replacing the truth with the fantasy. And in when you say mind. that, the main thing I hear is when you convince someone that something is not, when you misinform someone, even against their own credit, that sounds like you're taking advantage of someone who doesn't have a good standard of evidence. Right. And the funny thing is, is we are all perceptible to that because no one has a perfect standard of evidence. It's something that mm. you can right which means <clears throat> yeah. there in lies the problem with the how we give narcissists power it's because they exploit a weakness that we all share and that yeah. it's a it's a tricky thing to figure out true things from false things and yeah. when you have a very yes. clever person who knows how to manipulate information in just the way that you want to hear it they can completely yes. make you do things that are against your own interests larry what's up well, it's particularly effective, I would think, against people who are religious and that they already follow a totalitarian uh, worldview and they're susceptible to taking something at, work, at, at its uh, face value as, sure. quote, I, gospel. 
I would adding argue, another dictator to a dictator. Yes, but, yes. Mm, I would argue yeah. if you are already religious, you're already a victim of this. Yep. Because yes. there's no reason why anyone's born is convinced that any higher power or anything exists. You're convinced of that when you're born, right. starting and from too the fact young that you're not think about it on your own. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And when all your authority figures, your parents, <clears throat> and your your pastor, your teachers all believe this, you will. Oh heck, the law enforcement agents, the uh, uh, politicians, yeah. all the way up to the people the who make your license plates. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Everybody. Uh, and, and when I was born, anyway. I'll wrap this up into this too, because when you have an authority figure who believes in a God, it makes it very easy for that person to make enemies of other people because it's like, they don't believe in our God. They're not, they don't have our values. Like I see us and them us versus in group, us. in group, out group. Yep. And I feel like in my head, that's the OG path of religion and how it's been so effective in terms of shaping cultures. It's essentially one guy, because it tends to be a dude, let's be honest, on a, on a hilltop or on a church pew or some sort, being like, we are the, the microphone. Yeah, <laughs> the microphone. They are the bad <laughs> people. Let's take their stuff. And everybody agreeing, because they're not us. So, of course, yeah, we yeah. should take their stuff. Like, That's right. Yeah. It's such a shame. It's a real shame. But I feel like we fall prey to it <clears> even <throat> today. If we look on the news, I, can, I can't flip through the channel right now. If I, were to, I don't even have cable. But I know if I did have cable and I turned it on and flipped through the channels, if I had 30 channels, I think that's how many channels are. It's been a while. I guarantee you, I would at least see 10 narcissists <laughs> yeah, yeah. or, or mouthpieces of narcissists telling me how the world works or why some group of people are terrible or why something yeah. terrible is happening. Well, this is why I don't have cable, but like, I don't think the internet's any better to be honest with you. Uh, uh, I know I'm getting a little bit uh, preachy here, but John Richards, you know, in England, right? You, I, yeah. I would hope that it is not as polarized as it is in the U.S. Is that the case, or do you feel like things are worse in some other ways? Well, uh, it's not so polarized here. Uh, you are in a, a ludicrously polarized situation right now in the U.S., I'm afraid. Mm. And we are going that way, which is usually the case. You know, what you do, what we follow 10 years later. But um, what I wanted to, to mention, a couple of things... One is uh, George brought up Jeffrey Epstein, and of course he's very topical at the moment because one of our princes, the Queen's second eldest son, is implicated in uh, a, a case which is being brought against him for, um, what was the expression, uh, seducing, no, it wasn't uh, raping, no, I'm not sure it was that, uh, a, an underage woman, and he I'm denies. I'm sure he said he he didn't do anything. He looks very trustworthy to me in that interview, right? He was well, just I can't, uh, uh, he's letting truth be all around his face. I think that's an uh, upstanding guy. I, I can't possibly say anything more about that because I'll be thrown in the tower. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's weird the, how the I, that permeates. But yeah, the other thing I wanted to say is that. Where do you stop? There's a line, isn't there, between sort of benevolent manipulation and narcissistic coercion for your for your own mean purposes. John, I wish you didn't say that. What do you mean by benevolent manipulation? And is there, there's is there such a thing? Please explain us, Venn diagram. Okay. okay. Well, I, I'll give you a personal example so you can pull me apart. Many years ago, when I had sons, but they're now fully grown up and flown away. One of them wanted a gun. <laughs> they, they wanted, he wanted a, a, a air rifle. You know, you, I mean, you can't get guns in this country, but at the time you could get air rifles. It's very hard to get even them now, but back then some boys had air rifles and they did target shooting. So I said, okay, I'll get you an air rifle, but remember that the only thing you can do with it is point it and pull the trigger, and that's it. You know, that's the end of the fun. So I was trying to persuade him not to want it. Hmm. And that's Without manipulation. Not to want it. Without telling him not to want it or that. Exactly. And I was trying to persuade him to change his mind about wanting it. And, and but that's benevolent manipulation. We we don't want young boys with guns. <laughs> so the principle behind it was, you know, fatherly. Mm. Oh, I bought it for him. <laughs> he pointed it and shot it a few times. And then it's been 
rotting in the garage ever since. Okay. Okay. All right. He didn't put out his eye with it. <laughs> no, yeah. he didn't do any. <laughs> the most, the most like, harm, the most harm he did with it was ruin one of our drain pipes. Wow. <laughs> which, which is still broken. The rain runs down the outside because there's a hole. <laughs> yeah. I remember the Red Ryder air rifle from uh, right. A Christmas Story, and I think that's what Larry was referencing. Uh -huh. You're going to take out your eye with it. Right? That's right. Oh. Yeah. Right. But uh, I, w I was going to comment uh, because uh, when Ty had asked uh, uh, John about whether... Um, uh, you know, Britain or the English are divided. I mean, I thought Brexit was a perfect example of that yes. absolute polarization where yes. it was yes. 49 to 51. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, how can something be that contentious? You know, if it isn't clearly obvious that there's a benefit to the greater, you know, proportion of the population, why does it sit at 5149? Like, you know, I would say that that decision shouldn't happen until it's, you know, 6535. You know what I yeah. mean? You know, yeah. it, it just seems that this one vote over the post is just an absolutely ridiculous way because yes. you disenfranchise essentially half the population yes. Yes. when you allow a decision to go through on that basis. It's crazy. Don't don't get me on this subject. Hey, it's almost as if a bunch of narcissists made government. <laughs> Indeed. It's it off, of a, off a system that a other bunch of nar Greek narcissists made up. Yeah. And they say it because they're the ones who've benefited because their money is already offshore. And, yes, of course. And it's only got more valuable, while the rest yeah. of us have seen everything get more expensive yeah. or even unavailable, like petrol for the last month. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I didn't even know it was that bad. Yeah, ours ours just went up twenty cents a liter. Yeah, it so <clears> went from a dollar thirty seven to a dollar fifty seven a liter. So it's crazy. Yeah, but we're we're paying that. Oh no, you did say liter. You did say liter, didn't yeah. you? Because I was thinking it might be gallons, like they yeah. asked. No, these, these guys. These guys are still, <laughs> still gallons. Yeah, <laughs> we're still doing it by gallons. Yeah. Uh, That's why all the satellites and spacecraft are crashing. Yes. Oh, really? They're sticking to standard measurements and all that. Well, the, the, the story behind that was in the, the early shuttle, wasn't it? When uh, one company made part of the rocket to metric and the other company made it to Imperial and they didn't fit properly. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's not cool. That's nope. not cool. What are you going to do? You got to get your rocket ships together. Those, those damn narcissists. Yeah. So here, my thing is narcissists have definitely an impact on our society. They have an impact on our government, but it's not just something that's like recent. Like we can't just point to Trump and be like, Hey, narcissists, we're done here. Like it's systematic and it's been affecting it since the, the conception of what government, you know, if we were taking it from Greek principles, it is and was because even the people that we were basing it off of their ideas were probably not the best people in the world either. They, we, like for example, Aristotle, Plato, known slave masters, known people who write literature on how to own people, does not want women in, in positions of power, only men, yeah. but not just any man has to be land owning men. And that oh. means rich people. So like, oh. you know, you have a system of government that we're based off of who are people who are only interested in their own self-interest for the most oh. part and aren't privy to the consequences of bad judgments or bad calls as the people that they are in control of. And I feel like that is in my head, an aspect of narcissism. And whenever complications or complaints come up, it's like, well, at least we're not like the Chinese. It's like, whoa, whoa, why are you, why are you us versing them? Like, why can't we focus on our problems? And why is pointing out another uh, weird system or a different system from a different people in any way helpful to improving ours? Like, can't we work on making a more perfect union together? Yeah, I feel like we have to struggle so hard to get through that. We have to struggle through waves of narcissism to get good at anything. But we are at the bottom of half hour. I, George, I saw you raise your hand. We're gonna get straight back to you when we come back to the show. Uh, Larry, why don't you take a set? We'll come right back to narcissism, how they're okay. screwing up sure. everything that's nice. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. 
Welcome to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Doubter Five. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville for a second. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 19th year. Uh, we have over a thousand members now, and we're back to having weekly in person meetings down in Knoxville's Old City at the Barley's Taproom and Pizza pizzeria out on patio. Uh, we also have weekly Zoom meetings for those who don't live in Knoxville or are old like us and don't want to get out into a crowd and, and take the chance of getting COVID. Uh, so check on our website, uh, that's knoxvilleatheist.org, or go to YouTube or free, uh, sorry, Facebook and check on uh, our pages there. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start one. On that, where you want to pick up? Hey, we were leaving mid thought on a question from George. We're talking about narcissism and why narcissists won't let us have nice things. George, what was on your mind? Well, um, you know, following up on what we were talking about in the last half hour, um, narcissists are master manipulators. And that's the name of the game. There, I think, to me, I mean, there are various characteristics that they have, but uh, to control, and they have many different techniques of manipulation, and the um, uh, to bring up the unspoken name so far, Donald Trump. Um, the thing that perplexes me, the question that I just have not been able to understand the answer to is why does anybody want to work for this man? Because they should know that he is going to throw them under the bus. You would think. I mean, That's, as much as we read about that happening all the time, or you just have to wonder about people like that. Dread? And they are so Dredd they has are, an idea on this. Dread has an idea on yeah. this, and this is good topic. Well, good topic. I, I was going to ask, um, because you said narcissists are master manipulators. Are they master manipulators by virtue of being a narcissist, or are they narcissistic by virtue of being master manipulators? Like, no, chicken is and one egg. is one. Yeah, is one kind of causal to the other, and and which way does it go? I have a quick comment on that, Dren. I think no <laughs> one took Trump seriously until people in power realized that they could use Trump, and then eventually came to the point where Trump was just a tool. You know, his own tool that was so good that people were like, okay, well, even if he gets kicked out, we'll still be here. So let's just keep pushing whatever he's doing because it's working good for us now. And mm. so I think Trump is very much in the same position as he was, you know, six years ago when he wasn't president, where he's just this loudmouth guy who thinks very highly of himself, but now he's lost all political power and he's still acting the exact same thing, except no one's paying attention to him nearly yeah. as much as they were. It well, was, this, yeah, oh, and, and that's kind of my question is because, you know, certainly there was a large portion of the population that realized he's, he thinks he's a master manipulator. Right. And in fact, he's just a, a, a goofball. Right. Um, who is so self-involved that he believes these things about himself when clearly um, reality does not agree. And I'll, I'll, I'll just Kate, I'll book in this and then we get to dread or George. Uh, I don't think he's not a narcissist. I just think he's a terrible one that was probably being used <laughs> by more clever <laughs> narcissists to affect a, a certain agenda, right? It's like, hey, we're gonna go bomb this country, but we don't want people to talk about it. Can Trump say something stupid? Yeah, of course, just put the camera on him. Great. Trump says something stupid, that's in the news. And meanwhile, <laughs> yeah. no one talks about that, right? George, what do you, uh, what, what do you got? Well, you know, last, last week I, I mentioned three psychologists that I recommend that everybody pay attention to um, and I'll mention their names before we go today for everybody. Uh, but one of them, George Simon, who's a rather conservative uh, fellow, was asked in an interview, why does Trump do this stuff? And his response was, because it works. <laughs> 
and that's it. That's um, but in answer to your question, I think it was uh, Dread Pirate. Uh, I think the narcissism came first. Mm. Certainly, in his case, yeah. yes, yeah. 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 In other words, the narcissism was formed very early as a response to being abused as a child, uh, to being um, um, traumatized. Oh, oh, in tra overlooked at the very least. You and know, then, what's that? And then, and then this, uh, so, this tendency is then an expression of narcissism, right? Yes, exactly. And and the psychologist Ramani Dervasala, who I highly recommend, um, her attitude about people like this is that they are responsible for the destruction that they cause. No matter what was done to them in childhood, they own the devastation that they cause in the lives of They others. own it. They are accountable for it. And I, as much as I love nature and nurture, I will say this. There are a lot of people who are overlooked growing up. There are a lot of people who are traumatized. They're not all narcissists. So there no. is something specific to people who go that route that speaks to their character, which makes them accountable for their actions. Larry, what's up? Uh, we were talking about a chicken and egg kind of thing. And, and uh, George has been asking us, how, why do we always allow them to lead us? I think there's the, to run for office, you have to have a very healthy self-respect uh, <laughs> and a uh, self thought of yourself, self image. And I think that a large proportion of the people that would get actually get into office would be uh uh, narcissistic and an mm. attribute, if nothing else. Of course, there are a lot of people that run for office to be able to help their fellow man. Right. But, uh, you know, that's one of the things about just having a good, healthy self-respect to be able to put yourself forward like that. But a lot of um, narcissists would definitely have that. Cool. Self-selecting. Yep. Mm. Or, or, you know, if even be a sense of duty, like we've had veterans before who have applied, who I think were, you know, pretty upstanding people who are just thinking like, Hey country, I fought for this. I bled for this. I want to make sure that we can put ourselves in the direction. It's not about me. It's just, I've already come from a position of self-sacrifice and I am willing to, if oh. America chooses me, do what I can to continue to do, you know, service to my country. It's like, I can appreciate that. What is it? The Constantine? Constantine, is that his name? Constantine. There's a uh, famous Roman, Roman yep. emperor that yeah. brought Christianity. That was Constantine. Uh, yep. Yeah, Constantine. Uh, okay. Well, then I I am mixing up my parables, but unfortunately, there was one who was like a general who was like a farmer, and people brought him in. They were like, "You need a lead," and he led. And then at the end, he's like, "I'm going back to farming, guys. See ya." And he just went back to going back to being a farmer. It's probably not Constantine. I'm thinking of a uh, oh, since no. I'll look it up. You guys have a fun, have a conversation with yourself. Uh, uh, we'll throw and, it up. And, and he served as an emperor or is it? No, not an emperor, just a general, just a general. Oh. In the league. Well, isn't that the, the premise of that movie uh, with uh, Russell Crowe? <laughs> gladiator. Yeah. Gladiator. <laughs> Didn't he want to go back to being a farmer after you finished uh, fighting for, uh, for the emperor in that war? And I'm pretty sure he just really point. wanted to rub long blades of grass, like very, very yeah, slow. Yeah, yeah, slow yeah. Motion. I think you're thinking about Cincinnati. Cincinnati, yes, yes. Cincinnati. I knew it was, I knew it was a C name, but I didn't know if it was Cincinnati. Yeah. So, yeah, Cincinnati, General, want to serve, was done serving, went back to his regular life. He, like, threw away a bunch of money just to go back to doing the things that he did. And I'm like, there are people who are like that. And I feel like some of them do – Asked to be president. Do they get successful and get in? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I, I'm not going to. There's, there's a city named after him in Ohio. <laughs> true, true, true. I'm sure that was his end goal at the end of the day. It's like, I want to yeah. be in Ohio City in a place called uh, America. George, what's up? Well, I was just, you know, what flashed into my mind was uh, differences in manipulative technique. Um, uh, Hitler's method was to use the southern minister approach in addressing a crowd, mm. whereas, I, and I think Martin Luther King did the same thing, being a southern minister. It's, it's, um, it's an equal opportunity sort of a thing, where you start out talking very quietly and rationally and logically, and you build and you build and you build, and you're just screaming at the end. Uh, Trump's method is different. <laughs> he, sorry, sorry. He blurts, you know. He 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 puts out a pepper spray of right. 
of, of blurt and, and of attack on somebody else. Right. But so that's his MO. It, it seems to work either way. So, I, there, yeah, it's a very bizarre thing. George, you made a brilliant point. It's almost as if people are willing to listen to someone, whether they speak fast, slow, loud or quiet, as long as they're saying the things that they're feeling. Right. And not what they're critically thinking about, but what they're feeling. And, and that that's yeah. if that's the case. Then it's very easy for anybody who's crazy <laughs> to, to amass a very popular fan base if they're just saying things that. Yeah. The, the fan base wants to hear regardless of how they're saying it. And I feel like there's... Yeah. See, I think that, that people like us um, want to influence other people with logic because we are assuming that they will meet us on the logical plane, mm -hmm. whereas these master manipulators mm -hmm. have it really figured out. <laughs> they're, they're hitting them in the gut. Right. And we don't know how to do that. And, you know, there is something with the way how Trump does speak or the method of how he speaks. It's very similar to a fast paced car salesman or a used car salesman who's like, hey, this oh is the God. best car in the world. It's an incredible car. You know, it's got a little bit of bunches and patches, but, you know, see, it fell on fire last time. But listen, it's so good now. It's going to be the best car ever. Sure, it, fell, it blow, explodes every other Wednesday. But. This is the car that's going to be reliable. It's going to drive your kids to work. It's like you're saying bad things and you're mixing in with good things and you're focusing on like huge adjectives that stick. And like the person's more entranced with how you're speaking than with the actual topics of conversation that you're cherry picking from. And unlike, you know, the, the Southern Baptist approach where you almost completely circumvent the bad and you just upswell, upswell, upswell and keep building up. <laughs> Trump will say things that are absolutely horrendous, but he'll mix them in with, but it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Like we're all going to get the virus, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? We're Americans. It's, we're going to live through it. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be terrific. Freedom. It's be terrific. It's be freedom. And I'm like, you can't, for the people who are listening critically, it's like there's no substance here. And you're in fact making me more scared, which makes me listen to you more because I see what you're saying as a threat, which makes me want to pay attention to what you're saying. Right. And for the people who want to hear what he's saying, they're willing to happy, happily listen to him at, just to just to hear the person that they chose was a good person. And so what ends up what you end up with is people who are critical thinking, paying attention and people who aren't critically thinking, paying attention. And it just continues to build a, a crowd. And I feel like there's danger in there, too. George, what's up? Well, it's, uh, you know, one thing in terms of manipulation that occurs to me, again, I'm back to Trump, is that um, if we read a transcript, if we, if we watch him speak to an audience or we read a transcript of what he actually said, it's word salad. These yep. are sentences that don't compute. They, they make no sense whatsoever. They contain the buzzwords, but they don't make logical sense as sentences. And I remember there was a... There was a reporter from a New Zealand paper who was trying to uh, cover Trump from New York, and he's in Washington, and she said that the reporters have to get together and rewrite what he says because they don't make sense otherwise. Right. So they have to put words into his, into his mouth. Okay, this is the problem. And, and, and my point is that he knows how to speak English because every once in a while he does. And I don't think he does. He, his vocabulary is pretty big, in fact. It's pretty big. His vo my vocabulary yeah. is pretty big. It's pretty. It's a. It's the pretty big it's a, <laughs> uh, vocabulary. It's incredible. It's the best vocabulary ever. Yeah, it's pretty. It's the biggest, <laughs> prettiest vocabulary that was ever big and pretty. You know, it's uh -huh. the biggest one. But I'm saying, um, he's I feel the like best words. Yeah, he's literally said that. I feel like there's a little hint of sexism in here too, because we just before Trump, the last maybe the second to last political roundup we did, we had a lady called Sarah Palin, who in my head was, uh -huh. uh, uh, what, what was that dread? <laughs> I just a laugh. Oh, is this Sarah, a laugh? Sarah Palin chuckle. We had a Sarah Palin, but here's the thing: if you if you run Trump speeches over Sarah Palin speeches, Sarah Palin was making full sentences and, and was not using the same word multiple times in a sentence. They were and silly like had, <clears throat> and had punctuation. Yeah, but like I can see Russia from my house. That's a complete full sentence that had begins and end. If Trump was doing it, it'd be like Russia, biggest, most terrific place ever you know great place i would love to live there anyway seeing from my house i live in a big house gold made of gold 
love my house great it's like what are you even saying like what makes yeah, sense yeah. in that word yeah we i looked at one guy as president and the other one we we're laughing at for being vice president i feel like yeah. you know as much as we are pointing out narcissists i still feel like there's a little bit of sexism there too anyway george what's up um yeah um uh okay statistically i believe so far um, narcissists tend more to be men than women. So why don't we just mention a few women narcissists? Um, and I'm pulling a blank. Maybe Sarah Palin? What, Madonna maybe? Um, anybody know anybody? Well, if you go by who takes the most selfies, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, pretty, that's pretty much a lot of them. You're shooting pretty low. You're, pretty, you're shooting pretty low. You're, you're basically saying every 14-year-old and lower. <laughs> well, that point. Going, going on the, the story of the original narcissist who looked at himself in a puddle, that's, uh -huh. that's the like, measure. There's so many narcissists that they put a camera on the front side of the phone as like, yeah. mm -hmm. you remember like that was probably a boardroom meeting. It's like, we need to put two cameras on the phone. It's like, no, why would you do that? You just turn your phone. It's like, no, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, we have a demographic that would love this yeah. idea. It's like a camera facing, you could see your face in the screen on the reflection. It's like, no, trust me about this. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> This is a high-tech <laughs> mirror. Should we patent it? Nah, let's not patent it. Let's let every phone company from here on out just do that idea because it's so crazy. No one's going to ever want it. It's like, uh, that guy's like in Hawaii right now being like, I had the zillion dollar idea and no one took me seriously. Dang it. Uh, anyway, sorry about that, guys. Uh, so narcissists, I feel like we, you talked about Madonna, who was like a female narcissist. I'm willing to say that they are they are definitely, as, as John was alluding to, benevolent forms of manipulation. And then, uh, obviously, you know, harmful forms of manipulation, right? And my point would be, I consider Madonna one of, like, the good forms. Because while she was focused on herself, she was doing it in a way where there wasn't really anyone pioneering, you know, the music that she was doing, the messages that she was going for, the Vogue identity. And I'm like... Hey, good for you. You may actually made music kind of awesome for like a period of time. And I, mm. I don't have a problem with that. Dread? Well, I was just going to say something similar to that um, is that uh, on the register of actors and their behaviors on set, you can differentiate between those who are narcissistic and those who are just self promoting. Um, you know, there, there's some pretty bad examples. And I'm trying to think of. Uh, uh, trying to think of that one guy um, who was, the, I mean, you hear stories about how petulant and and childish and, and stomping on the thing and stomping on the ground and I only want blue or take all the blue smarties out of my, uh, my bowl because, you know, I, you know, these, these, you know, terrible demands that uh, some actors and, and other performers make on their assistants and on other people around the set to sort of place themselves at the center of all of attention, whether that's positive or negative. Sure, sure. And then what do you mean by self-promoting? What would be the alternative to that? Like, Well, just... that's like Madonna is, is, I mean, she's got an agent, she's got a promoter, she's got, got it. you know, a, a stylist, she's got, you know, I mean, it's about creating an image. Got it. And and that person may, you know, go to, uh, you know, um, cancer treatment centers after the fact without telling anyone, you know what right. I mean? So, you know, using their position to do good, but without drawing attention to themselves, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Bill Gates Foundation, for instance, is another yeah. case, you know? So there's, there's a lot of, you know, well-known people out there that are like, you know, care about their image, but it's not in a narcissistic way there. That's the benevolent uh, sort of aspect to it. And, you know, we were talking about this last time we were talking about narcissism, but Alfred Nobel, uh, creator yeah, yeah. of the Nobel Peace Prize, right. that is literally a guy being like, I need to promote myself. I may have done some bad things, not bad things personally, but people might be using mm -hmm. my invention for bad things. Let's see if we can't use it to inspire some good in the world. And we'll make an award that's like, hey, whoever's doing the best things for peace, we'll give you a million dollars because I got the money, right? Yeah. And, and let's, let's try to make an example 
that people can follow, like a testament of chains of people. We'll give it to women, we'll give it to men. It'll just be whoever is the most peaceful person, right? <laughs> it tends to be the case that nowadays it's giant corporations that are applying for peace prizes, which, you know, is, is its own thing. It is. But who, why would you want a million dollars giant company? Like, do you really need it? Like, for real? But anyway, yeah. um, I am happy to see people take the route of promotion in, in that aspect that you're referring to than petulant uh, narcissistic tirades, right? Though I will mm -hmm. say this, when Will Smith is on set, he brings his own trailer. Like he doesn't charge the company, the movie company. There's like, I got my own van. I got my own trailer. I'm bringing my family with me. So it's not like I'm going to like clubs or anything. It's like, like I, I'm a family man. Really? I have like a three tower trailer that I bring with me. It's like a multi-million dollar thing, but it's his. It's like, Hey, I bought this my own. Like I already made the investment. Just tell me where the movie is and I'll drive there or my guy will drive us there and we will have fun. And when we're done, we'll drive ourselves back to our home. I'm like, well, I like the idea of like, hey, just invest in being the star that you feel like you are. And instead of having people pull your blue M&Ms out of your bowl, just buy like your own bowl of blueless M&Ms and you'd be like, I, I gained the system. <laughs> I know yeah. the display yeah. of it. I like the things the narcissist like, but I'll buy it for myself. <laughs> and I feel like he kind of shortcutted the system there. I think there's something good to say. Uh, Larry, final thoughts, and then uh, we can go go around. You have any thoughts on narcissism? No, uh, just what I was saying about it. it. It just tends that they would want to go into public office because they think so much of themselves and so little of others. But I mean, there are a lot of people that run for office that that don't think that way. Uh, look at all the Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm sure every party would look at the other party and think they're just a bunch of narcissists. Sure, sure, sure. But, at least but, some yeah. representatives. Hey, George Brown, how do you feel like we handled narcissism in today's show? I think there's a, a, a hell of a lot more <laughs> to it. And, um, you know, may I read my list of criteria again? from sure. last week. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. And then uh, I want to mention three p people to pay attention to, okay? Uh, characteristics. This is narcissistic personality disorder. Grandiosity, need for admiration and recognition, disdain and lack of empathy for other people, sense of personal superiority, establishes abusive power and control over others, fragile ego, intolerance of criticism, and belittles other people. And I added the word seductive. Before you get to your list um, of people, I was just gonna say that sounds exactly like God. <laughs> well, okay. There's, there's, there's something that's not in there because uh, a narcissist doesn't like to take responsibility, mm. do they? Mm. So, nice. So, 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 so That's a good they, one. they always try to pass the can down to some somebody right. else who, who is to blame. And that reminds me of a certain son who allegedly took on board all of the sins of everybody and died. <laughs> <laughs> May I give my list of people, please? Sure, go for it. Okay. I'm going to do this real slow. Uh, if you're of a conservative bent, George Simon, he's a psychologist. George Simon, S-I-M-O-N. Romani Dervasala, D-U-R-V-A-S-A-L-A, and she uses the handle Dr. Romani, R-A-M-A-N-I. You'll find her on YouTube. She's an exceptionally good explainer about cluster B personality disorders and narcissists mm -hmm. in particular. And Sam Vaknin, Sam, S-A-M, V-A-C-N-I-N. And what's so fascinating about him is that he is a psychologist who is also a narcissist. So he will tell you the story from the inside. Self-diagnosed? Self I can't say, I don't know. Um, he, didn't, he didn't just get a medical dictionary and read it and decide he had all the conditions, did he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so anyway, these these people have a presence on YouTube. Uh, Simon's own material tends to be very stale because he hasn't updated his stuff, you know, but it's still good. Cool. All right. John, where can we find you? Free Thought Productions. That's my YouTube channel. And I've just made another video today that is one minute and 10 seconds long. Oh, he's gaming that algorithm. Nice. Yes. <laughs> you, got a, you got a sneak peek about what that one minute uh, vid is? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's about um, atheism, our birthright. Ooh, interesting. Ooh. Interesting. Mm. Where do we find it, John? Free Thought Productions right. on YouTube. Also, Global Atheist News. I'm digging that channel. I love it. I yeah, love yeah. it. I love it. I that's, love it. That's, thank you for that. That's, that's my weekly review of how religion impacts humanity. Well, every single time I cook breakfast, I have that thing playing. It's really good. By the time I'm done, it's like, this is great. This is a great little update. I love Very it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Dread, Pirate, yeah. Eggs, give right. me an update. How you been? Not too bad. Um, I was going to give a name here, and I was thinking specifically about Val Kilmer, the actor, who's been uh, well reputed as being one of the worst actors uh, to work with on set. And uh, he, he, this is his quote. As you know, I have a reputation for being difficult, but only with stupid people. Uh, so <laughs> that really that really does say it all. <laughs> but yeah. uh, as far as my content, you can find me on uh, on YouTube at Mind Pirate M I N D P Y R A T E. I stream their show when I'm on it uh, live on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm up to 95 people subscribers five hey. more is my threshold please subscribe very very nice and uh you can find me on let's chat i'm on youtube and uh we'll be here every week larry you know this atheism thing i think it's just a fad unless if you know what it's about tell me what it tell me what you got i happen to have a book nice <laughs> called atheism what's it all about it's available on amazon um and i would also like to recommend people read mary trump's book um on trump himself she is a trained psychologist and it says that he is a textbook narcissist as well uh remember this this show the digital free thought radio hour is available on apple itunes pocket cast amazon and podcasts everywhere just search for the digital free thought radio hour my own content is on digitalfreethought.com be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, you can find my YouTube channel by searching for Larry Rhodes or Doubter5. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to Ask an Atheist at KnoxvilleAtheist.org. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help from recoveringfromreligion.org. And by the way, if you're a member of a clergy, uh, a preacher, imam, pastor, priest, but no longer believe in the claims of your religion, there's help for you at the Clergy Project. The link is clergyproject.org. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. -bye. Robin. <laughs> <laughs>